Known as the one who never misses with an arrow, Dingan Bandi is the biggest symbol of the African resistance against colonization. Queen of Ndongo, now Angola, Dingan Bandi entered history as a fearless warrior, excellent military strategist, and astute diplomat. She personally led armies until 73 years of age and was so much respected by the Portuguese that Angola was only dominated after her death at 81 years of age. Speaking of Nzinga is speaking of a planet both distant and close. She was born within the Bantu-speaking Africans, the same that enslaved in Brazil created the capoeira and samba. Her people are therefore rooted in the Brazilian national identity, although the society to which she belonged is very little known. As if the Portuguese invasion was not enough, the Ndongo kingdom had to defend itself from the more traditional enemies, the Jagas, a looting warrior people. Still, where was not Zingambandi's only headache, she also had to put up with strong internal opposition for being a woman and for having a slave mother, a grave stain to her position since all the power in the kingdom was based on kinship. Zinga was brought up by her father, King Jingambandi, to become a warrior queen. However, when he died in 1617, it was her brother Kiambandi who took over the throne. An agitated fight for government power of Ndongo therefore began. One of Kia's first actions was to kill Nzinga's only son, potential candidate. And Zinga only became queen in 1624 after Kia's assassination during one of the kingdom's worst crises, when Dongo rapidly lost territory to the Portuguese. Of course, there was plentiful bad mouth of Nzinga's responsibility for the king's death. It was he, her own brother, who opened the door to the queen's brilliant diplomatic career. In the middle of the crisis, Kia needed someone with capacity to negotiate with the Portuguese and decided to ask his sister for help. She therefore left to Luanda with the mission of negotiating a peace agreement with the invaders. She was greatly hosted with cannon fire, ceremonial soldiers and carpets covering the entire trajectory. However, when she met the governor, she noted that there was only one seat in the room, with only some pillows in the floor left for her. Dinga immediately ordered a slave to stand on her force and sat on top of her, in order to not be inferiorized. O reino do Ndongo é soberano, não pode ser vassalo de outro. Eu quero morrer de açoite, se tu negra... Years after, already crowned, she realized her most successful political maneuver, the union with mighty Jagas. For this, she had to adopt many customs salian to the Ndongo culture, such as the cannibalistic rituals which helped animating soldier for battle. Jagas were especially dangerous. They battled until the last man and cowardness the punished by death. The tale tells that in certain rituals, Zinga dressed as a man and obliged her numerous lovers to dress as a woman. Her legend was that of tradition subversion, probably a way to reaffirm power in a society which did not accept a woman as sovereign. <laughs>
é difícil. Zinga fought against her people enslavement, but sold her slave war prisoners to the Portuguese. Meu amor. She defended her kingdom's religion, however, she adopted many Catholic customs. She embraced a different culture just to profit from the military prowess of the Jagas. Cabeça de Ginga, eu vou entregar-lhe uma salva de prata. Os portugueses me traíram, me perseguiram, roubaram o nosso chão. E nossa irmã, ela estava lá a escutar para nos informar. A guerra só nos tem prejudicado. As peças de escravos diminuíram, nós não conseguimos encher as caravelas para enviar para o Brasil. Qual é a proposta? Nós não vos atacamos e vocês não nos atacam. Mas para podermos honrar esse trato, vamos ter de eliminar a Ginga. Façam com Ginga o que quiserem. She had everything in place to fail. But she became one of the biggest governors in Africa's history. Dar luta aos meus inimigos até a eternidade. Não vou perdoar mais a vida a nenhum português. In the end, she managed to maintain her people's independence during her reign, and today she remains a central figure in Angola's culture. Certainly, she merits it.